In this video, we are going to be learning all about the midpoint formula. First, let's start off with what a midpoint is. A midpoint is the point that splits a line segment into two congruent parts. And if we look at a diagram here, you can see point M is the midpoint of line segment AB because it splits it into two congruent parts since we can see AM and MB are congruent to one another. When we're working with coordinates, we have a formula to help us find the coordinates, the x and y coordinate of the midpoint of a segment. And that's this formula, x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. What we're basically doing is we are finding the average of the x values and we are finding the average of the y values. You'll see on some of the problems in this video that we are actually given the midpoint and we are instead asked to find another endpoint. And there are a couple of ways you could do this. Uh, we could plot, if you have a graph paper, and use slope to help you find the other endpoint. You could list out the coordinates and try and find a pattern. Or you could solve algebraically using the midpoint formula. So I will do a problem using each of those methods so that you can see some possibilities in there. All right, first let's look at some sample questions where we're just asked to find the midpoint. Number one, use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint of AB with A negative 5, 1 and B 3, 7. So I'm going to add up the x's and divide by 2. Add up the y's, divide by 2. And then I'm just going to see if I can simplify this. So for negative 5 plus 3, that gives me negative 2 over 2 or negative 1. For the y's, 1 plus 7 is 8. Divide by 2, and I get 4. So the coordinates of the midpoint are negative 1, 4. We're going to follow that same process on a few more problems. Number 2, we're going to basically just change out the points. So we are adding our x's, 4 and 2. Add our y's, negative 8 and 0. And we get 3, negative 4 as our midpoint when we simplify that. Number three, our points are negative 12, 3, and 7, 1. Once again, we're looking for the midpoint. One little difference in this problem is when I start to simplify this, negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5, but that's not divisible by 2. That's going to happen on plenty of the problems. Half the numbers are not divisible by 2, so it's okay to get a decimal or a fraction here. I'm just going to leave mine as an improper fraction, so negative 5 over 2. And then 3 plus 1, 4 over 2 can be simplified to 2, so I will simplify that out. And number 4, add our x's, divide by 2, add the y's, divide by 2. That's going to give me 3 and 11 over 2. Again, I'm just going to leave the improper fraction. You could also do 3 comma 5.5 that would also be an acceptable answer all right if we take a look at number five at first glance it looks very different from the first four problems it says the diameter of a circle has endpoints negative seven negative seven and eight two find the coordinates of the circle center well if we think about the center of a circle and the diameter of a circle the center is really just the midpoint of the diameter so even though this question looks different, we're going to do the same process that we've been doing. And we are going to add the x's, divide by 2, add the y's, divide by 2. So that gives me 1 half and negative 5 over 2. In number 6, Similar idea where the question looks different, but we're really just finding the midpoint again. It says, at what point will a perpendicular bisector intersect AB with A negative 9, 4 and B 9, 6? Well, a bisector basically cuts through a segment at its midpoint. It also splits it into two congruent parts. So again, we're really just looking for the midpoint here. Add negative 9 and 9, divide by 2. Add 4 and 6, divide by 2. 
When we do that, 0, 5 becomes our midpoint of AB. All right, for the last four problems, 7 through 10, it says the use of the coordinate plane is optional. So in each of these problems, you are given the midpoint and you're asked to find one of the endpoints. So if I just scroll back here, this is what we talked about before when we said we sometimes are asked to find an endpoint. And there are different methods. You could plot and use the slope. You could look for a pattern or you could solve algebraically using the midpoint formula. So for number seven, I'm going to use this first method, plot and slope. For eight, I'm going to look for a pattern. For nine, I'm going to solve algebraically. Okay. All right, so if I take a look at seven, M is the midpoint of AB, A is negative nine, negative three, and M is negative seven, negative one. So I'm gonna just start by plotting my two points that I know. And I'm gonna zoom in on this picture. So I feel it's very important on these problems especially to label the points on your graph if they're given to you because now I can see a little reminder here that M is the midpoint. So I can imagine that B, the other endpoint, should be somewhere over here, right? If M is gonna be in the middle of that line segment, we just now have to figure out where exactly that point is. So I can use slope. I can see that from A to M, the slope is up two over two. And I'm just gonna repeat that. And wherever I land, that's my coordinate of B. And if I can continue my line segment, you can see here that looks correct that M is the midpoint of AB here. So in number seven, my coordinates of B are negative five, positive one. So that's our first method on how to find an endpoint. You plot and use the slope to help you find the other point. All right, on number eight. M is the midpoint of AB, given A24 and M61. What are the coordinates of B? For number eight, I am not going to use the slope method on this one. I am going to show you the other option, which is where you can list the coordinates and look for a pattern. So the three points in this problem are A, M, and B. And when I list these points, M has to be in the middle, or whatever the midpoint is has to be in the middle in order for this to work. So A is 2, 4. M is 6, 1, and we don't know what B is. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to look for a pattern between the coordinates. So I can see from A to M, the X coordinate increased by 4. So I'm going to increase by 4 again, and my new X coordinate is 10. I can see the Y coordinates went down by 3, so I'm going to go down by 3 again, continuing that pattern, and I get 10, negative 2 is my answer. Now, I didn't mention it in the last problem, but for any of these where you're finding an endpoint, there's a really easy way to check your answer, and that's just to use the midpoint formula that we've already talked about with the two endpoints. So if I use the midpoint formula here with our two endpoints, 2, 4, and 10, uh, negative 2, I'm going to get 12 over 2, which is 6. Then I'm going to get 2 over 2, which is 1. And that checks out and matches the midpoint we were given in this problem. All right, for number 9, M is the midpoint of I, B. M is 0, negative 3, and B is 6, 1. What are the coordinates of X? So I'm going to use a third method now, which is solving algebraically. And the way I start that out is I'm going to really write two equations. The first one is going to be finding the x, and the next one is going to be finding the y's. So for the one with the x, I know the midpoint, the x-coordinate of the midpoint, should come out to be 0. And I know that because the problem tells me. And for the y's, I know the y-coordinate of the midpoint should be negative 3. Now I'm going to plug in 
six one you can plug it in for x one y one or um x two y two it won't make a difference in your answer which one you pick so let's say i plug that in for x one and y one and now i'm going to cross multiply this i'm going to put zero over one when i cross multiply i get six plus x two is equal to zero solve for x2 and I get negative 6. Over for the y's, I'm going to plug in 1 for y1 and repeat those steps. I'm going to cross multiply, subtract the 1 over, and now I have my coordinates. So I'm going to take my answers here, the negative 6, the negative 7, put them together, and those are the coordinates of one pi. This is definitely the most time-consuming method, the one that's a little bit the most, like the most cumbersome where we really have to watch our work and our algebra. Okay. All right, for the last problem here, it says one endpoint of the diameter of a circle is eight one. If the center of the circle is two three, what are the coordinates of the other endpoint of the diameter? For number 10, I'm going to go back to my preferred method, which is plotting and using slope, creating those little slope triangles in there. So I know that one endpoint of the diameter is 8, 1. So I'm going to plot that. Now, it doesn't give me a letter here, but I'm just going to label it as endpoint just to be clear. And I know the center of the circle is 2, 3. So I'm going to label that as center, and I'm going to make a nice straight line connecting them. So I'm going to create these little slope triangles. I can see that from the center to the end point, we were going down two. And then we were going over, um, in this case, six. So I know where my other endpoint should be. I know it should be somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm going to repeat that slope triangle. By going over 6. Up 2. And wherever I land, that's my other endpoint. Okay, so in this problem, that gives me the coordinates of negative 4, comma 5. As a reminder for number 10, I could also do this by listing the coordinates and looking for a pattern and applying it. I could also use the algebraic method we saw in number 9. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and I could check my answer by plugging in the two endpoints into the midpoint formula and making sure that I get the midpoint that's provided in this problem. Hopefully this video helped you understand how to utilize the midpoint formula and also how to find endpoints.